There are many ways to build a bench, but today I'm gonna to show you how to build a bench with an epoxy resin river. This method requires a lot of work, but the end results are well worth it. Start by deciding how wide you want your bench to be. Then, add an additional two inches to that measurement that will be trimmed off later on. Cut one end off with the miter saw, and then use a table saw on the other side to keep the ends parallel. To create a solid bond with the epoxy, it's important to get rid of any soft wood and bark from the edges and inside gaps with a chisel and mallet. And for those hard to reach tight spots, use a wired brush. Once the bark is removed, use an angle grinder with a wire wheel attachment to rough up the edges and remove any remaining soft wood. With a track saw, cut the wood slab in half. These two pieces will hold the epoxy resin to create the river effect. Adjust the gap distance between the two pieces of wood to determine the size of the epoxy river. If you increase the gap, you'll end up with a larger river, which means you'll need more epoxy resin. Now it's time to build the mold out of the melamine boards. For the mold base, measure the overall width and depth of the wood slabs and add one and a half inches to each measurement. For the mold walls, add two inches to the height of the wood slabs to prevent any epoxy runoff. With all the melamine pieces cut out, assemble the mold by applying a bead of caulk to the underside of the four side pieces. Secure the sides onto the base of the mold with a brad nail gun. Caulk the inside and outside seams for a watertight seal. Clean up the inside of the mold with a damp paper towel and allow the mold to dry overnight. While waiting for the mold to dry, seal the edges with fast drying epoxy to prevent air bubbles from forming during the epoxy river pour. Use a syringe to fill any holes with epoxy. For very small holes, use black colored CA glue and super glue accelerator to save time. Once the epoxied edges are dry, lightly sand with 320 grit sandpaper and remove any dust from the sanded surfaces. Before pouring epoxy, lay down a plastic tarp to catch any mess. Use a shop vac to remove any dust or dirt from the mold. Apply a silicone lubricant spray inside the mold that will act as a releasing agent after the epoxy resin cures. Place the wood slabs into the mold and make any necessary adjustment cuts for a snug fit. Clamp down both pieces of wood to prevent epoxy from seeping underneath. Then, run the shop back again to capture new dust or wood fragments. To find the required fluid amount of epoxy resin needed, calculate the length times the width times the height of the area and divide by 1.805. For safety, put on a respiratory mask, gloves, and ensure you have good ventilation in your work area. Follow the specific mixing ratio requirements for your epoxy resin. Slowly pour epoxy part A and part B into a clean plastic measuring bucket. Mix the epoxy completely, paying extra attention to the edges and the bottom of the bucket. Continue mixing for three minutes, scraping the edges with a stir stick. To color the epoxy resin, add a few drops of a liquid pigment dye and continue mixing for another two to three minutes. Slowly pour the mixed epoxy into the river channel. Stop pouring when the epoxy reaches the crest of the channel and slightly pours over. If you run out of epoxy, you can always make more and continue pouring. After pouring epoxy, use a handheld torch or heat gun to remove air bubbles by quickly sweeping over the surface. Keep the torch at least six inches away to prevent damaging the epoxy. Continue checking the epoxy for the next one to two hours for any additional bubbles. The epoxy cure time is 72 hours in a clean and temperature controlled environment. Drape a plastic sheet over the bench mold to protect it from dust. After 72 hours, remove the mold carefully using a mallet to knock off the melamine boards. If the base of the mold is stuck, you can use wooden wedges to pry off the bench without damaging it. Use a drum sander to remove imperfections and smooth the surface of the bench. 
most of us don't have an industrial drum sander, so I recommend finding a local woodworking shop that offers a drum sanding service. The cost can range from $25 to $50, depending on the size of your piece. Clean up the ends of the bench by trimming off one inch from both sides. If you find any new small holes, fill them in with CA glue. To finish the bench edges, various router bits can be used depending on your desired look. I used a 45 degree chamfer bit on the underside of the bench and a roundover bit on the top. Beginning with the underside of the bench, sand with an orbital sander starting with 100 grit progressing up to 320 grit. After sanding, remove all the dust from the bench to prepare for the polishing of the epoxy. Apply painter's tape and plastic sheeting to protect the wood. Spread the polish evenly and begin buffing with an orbital polisher. Starting with a coarse pad, gradually switch to increasingly finer pads to give it a nice finish. Apply a top coat with a foam brush or a clean rag to all sides of the bench. Flip the bench over and repeat this process on the top side of the bench. Install whatever bench legs you choose by pre-drilling and fastening with wood screws. Use bench legs with a height between 16 to 19 inches to achieve an overall bench height between 18 to 20 inches. Lastly, you can install a crossbeam to complete your bench. The bench legs I purchased had a 2.5 by 2.5 inch opening, so I picked up a matching beam from a local lumber shop. Cut the crossbeam down to size, sand all the sides, and apply a top coat before installing.